things. But let's not lose sight. The Republicans are extremists. The stuff that they're doing is evil. Cutting 700,000 people off of food stamps while cutting, increasing the military to an obscene $750 billion. Cutting 700,000 people off of food stamps while you are get, uh, proposing another tax cut for the wealthy. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough giving $1.5 trillion Trump and his goons in the Republican Party. Now you want to give another tax cut they're proposing. You, Trump, and his goons, and Mitch McConnell, it's not enough. Not enough to do the tax cuts. Not enough to increase the defense budget. They're also trying to expand right to work. This has not been reported in the media either. Their goal is right to work in all 50 states by 2024. Look it up. I mean, I could go down the list. Just because I don't cover Trump 24-7 doesn't mean we need to lose the ball. So we should keep our eye off the ball. So I say all this because... In a normal society, right, if you had a strong opposition party in politics, wouldn't it be a slam dunk not only to beat Donald Trump in 2020, but to clobber, clobber Donald Trump, to embarrass him, to win in a landslide possibly of epic proportions? Shouldn't it be a slam dunk? I mean... Income inequality is soaring to record highs in the last five decades. Poverty, nearly half the country is poor. The the people that aren't poor are hanging on for dear life before they fall into poverty. People are working two to three jobs. Homelessness at an all-time high. People rationing their insulin and medication. I could go on. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Shouldn't it be unbelievably easy to beat this man? If you had an actual opposition party interested, genuinely, genuinely interested in beating Donald Trump, shouldn't it be? Well, apparently not, because I'm getting emails like this from my friends at the DNC. Subject line. I'm not making this up. This is three hours ago. This is not meant to scare you, but I need to tell you the truth about where we're at. Please read this email from beginning to end and then make sure you make your first donation to the DNC. Oh, my God. Jordan, by the way, I'm not a valued member of the DNC. I I haven't given a dime to the DNC, but I am on the email list so I could then mock them. Jordan, as a valued member of our party, I need to level with you. Please do, Tom. Please do. Right now, our party's fundraising is simply not where it needs to be to ensure our goal of winning the White House and important seats across the country. We don't need to match the Republicans dollar for dollar. I said that before, and it remains true. But so does this. You can only out-strategize, out-organize, and out-work so much. Candidly, there comes a point where we risk being overwhelmed by Republicans fundraising before the general election even begins. I'm coming to you today. While we still have time to turn this thing around, grassroots supporters like you are going to make or break the 2020 election, taking back the Oval Office from Donald Trump, flipping the Senate, and expanding our House majority are all critical, critical to restoring our democracy and our American values. And, and, and what they mean by this, restoring our democracy and our American values, is simply put, let's put the corruption back to the back rooms. Let's move it back. We don't want it out front. Corruption belongs in the back rooms with the cigar smoke. We must be able to support our candidates and fund the programs that will get us across the finish line. Will you make a $7 donation? We cannot reward Trump's dangerous, immoral, and frankly embarrassing behavior with another four years. The DNC is the only party committee dedicated to electing Democrats at all levels. All right, that's enough. I don't want to make you vomit. So why I read all this to you? And I'm not, like, breaking news to you, necessarily. The reason I'm bringing up all of this is if you have times like this where income inequality is soaring, you have poverty soaring, you have homelessness soaring, you have medical rationing soaring, all of this, not to mention, not to mention, you have from, look at the last decade, 2010, 2011, Occupy Wall Street, 2015, 2016, Bernie Sanders awakens a sleeping giant that is the progressive movement. 2018, that continues uh, in terms of more people coming out to vote, particularly young people. And now Bernie Sanders, I think they're almost, I think they're at 1.5 million volunteers. 
I think they have close to 4 million total donations. The progressive movement is alive and well and surging. The labor movement is awake for the first time, maybe since the 1980s. So all of this, you would think the Democratic Party candidates should be crushing Donald Trump, absolutely crushing him. But if you look at the New York Times story from a few weeks ago, Biden, even, even in Michigan, have to win Michigan back. Pennsylvania, he's up three, margin of error. Wisconsin, he's up three, margin of error. Florida, up two, margin of error. Arizona, up five. North Carolina, losing to Trump. And by the way, Hillary Clinton, head-to-head first Trump. Her numbers were better than this, and she still lost. Bernie, who either doesn't get any media coverage or the media coverage he does get is how terrible he is, how he'll get crushed in the general election. Bernie, plus two, margin of error. Plus one, essentially a tie. Plus two, margin of error. Losing by one. These other states, Trump, plus three. Warren, excuse me, Trump, plus six in Michigan. Tied, basically tied to me is losing. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and and not so great numbers. The only difference between Bernie and Biden and Warren, the one on the left, Biden, the media has made love, love, sweet love to him as he's clearly been losing his mental uh, faculties for the last six, six to nine months. Media still propping up Joe Biden like nobody's business. And until recently... Elizabeth Warren has had a honeymoon longer and more intimate than any married couple could enjoy with the media. Still, the man in the middle who has been, an, has had, an other than Jeremy Corbyn, who I think could complain just as much as Bernie Sanders, can you think of any politician who has had a as, as long-lasting and consistent and powerful and more money put into suppression campaign than Bernie Sanders? No. Even with all of this, Trump, who is now trying to cut 700,000 people off of food stamps, trying coups in every country under the, under the sun, now, now they're talking about another coup in Nicaragua. Bolivia, America is supporting that coup. Venezuela, I'm sure they'll double down and triple down, try it again next year. Am I, am I forgetting anyone this time? Oh, Philippines, America is supporting that brutal dictator. Donald Trump, if the election were held today, would beat Joe Biden. He would beat Elizabeth Warren. He would crush Mayor Pee Wee Herman, who is my next story, because Jen found something pretty good on Pete, and we're going to show Pete and that empty privilege vessel. The only one I think even has a shot head to head. And as a Bernie guy, I'm saying today, if the election were held today, I think it's a toss up between Trump or Bernie. I think with more time, Bernie will crush him. But if the election were held today, it's a toss up. I'm just being honest. So why is it that the Democratic Party, why is it that the Democratic Party is not crushing this guy? Why is it that the Democratic Party is sending you emails with subject lines? I don't mean to scare you, but we're broke. We're poor. Please give us money. Why is it that Mayor Pete won't open up his fundraisers? Why? Because like the fossil fuel companies who are just literally, they are scavengering to make this one final last stand. They are, they are, um, what's the phrase? Staking their flag one last time. They know it's, it's inevitable. Wind, solar, renewable. It's not if, it's when fossil fuels are put out of business. So, so is the Democratic Party also staking its final stand. From Joe Biden to Nancy Pelosi to Chuck Schumer to Dick Durbin to Tom Perez to Neera Tandon to the Center for Phony American Progress to all of them. They understand It's not if, it's when. They are like Game of Thrones. They're in the castle. They see the army coming, us. And they are just hanging on for dear life. 
and they would rather risk losing to Donald Trump and giving him another four years than finally, finally closing the door on the banks, on the fossil fuel companies, on the defense contractors, on the uh, pharmaceutical companies, on Silicon Valley. They would rather risk it all and give this madman, Donald Trump, another four years. Because I promise you, if all of these Democratic Party candidates, if the DNC were actually reading polls, listening to the pulse of this country, they would sign on today for Medicare for All. They'd sign on today for free public college. They would sign on today for a Green New Deal. They would sign on for all of this shit. If the corporate media wanted to sustain itself, the corporations that own these companies would be having progressives on, labor union workers on, labor leaders on, uh, more African Americans and Latinos on, because their model is slowly fading. That's why we need a status quo in this country. But they're not doing this because they're hanging on for dear life. And I'm sorry, I'm a little excited today and energetic because I see a slowly moving shipwreck. A slowly moving shipwreck. And they see see the iceberg right ahead. They see it. But they're saying, you know what? So what? We'll hit it and our luxury speedboats will come and rescue us. This is what the collective establishment's mindset is they are willing to go down to Trump rather than give up one cent. They they would rather go down to Trump rather than get rid of the consultants and the consultant class. They'd rather go down to Trump than give up their perches on all the boards, all the think tanks, and give up the revolving door that enriches them. Because I tell you, even though I wouldn't necessarily trust them, if they signed on to all of the policy proposals Bernie Sanders is proposing, the Democratic Party would win in a landslide that we have never, ever seen in this country. And they won't do it. And that's why this, even though this is from a few weeks ago, it's still relevant. This should scare the living hell. Because somebody like Trump with the conditions and and the economic reality that I just told you, should be trailing by 10 to 15 points right now. But he's not. He is in this thing. And if it were held today, I think it's a toss-up. And I wouldn't be doing my job to tell you otherwise. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you could sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.